shepherd went in haste and found Mary, Joseph, and the infant lying in a manger. Once in royal David's city stood a lowly cattle shed where a mother laid her baby in a manger for his bed. Memory was that mother And our eyes at last shall see him through his own redeeming love. For that child so dear and gentle is our Lord in heaven In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. On this first Sunday within the octave of Christmas, those first, those eight days right after Christmas that we continue to celebrate the birth of Christ, we remember in a special way this feast of the Holy Family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, that model family for all of us to follow. But knowing that we are all weak and that we all have our have our faults. We need the Lord's forgiveness and mercy. And so, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, 
to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, I am God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who were pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity, and so in the joy of your house delight one day in eternal rewards. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am your shield. I will make your reward very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what good will your gifts be if I keep on being childless and have as my heir the steward of my house, Eliezer? Abram continued, See, you have given me no offspring, and so one of my servants will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, No, that one shall not be your heir. Your own issue shall be your heir. The Lord took Abram outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars, if you can. Just so, he added, shall your descendants be. Abram put his faith in the Lord, who credited it to him as an act of righteousness. The Lord took note of Sarah, as he had said he would. He did for her as he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time that God had stated. Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son of his, whom Sarah bore him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known his deed among the prophets. Oh, sing to him, sing his praise, tell all his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name, let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Turn to the Lord and his strength. 
constantly seek his face. O children of Abraham, his servant, O descendants of the Jacob he chose, he the Lord is our God, his judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever, the promise he ordained for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath he swore to Isaac. The Lord remembers his covenant A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. He went out, not knowing where he was to go. By faith, he received power to generate, even though he was past the normal age and Sarah herself was sterile. For he thought that the one who had made the promise was trustworthy. So it was that there came forth from one man, himself as good as dead, descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sands on the seashore. By faith, Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was ready to offer his only son of whom it was said, through Isaac, descendants shall bear your name. He reasoned that God was able to raise even from the dead, and he received Isaac back as a symbol. The word of the Lord. control your hearts. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves 
or two young pigeons in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen the salvation which you prepared in the sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and glory for your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him, and Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted, and you yourself a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher, She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Just as every saint that we celebrate throughout the church here is a model of holiness for us, today we have the Holy Family, and it becomes a model not just for us as individuals, but as families, of course, as a family in Christ. In our culture, there's so much emphasis on the individual, the individual as a basic unit of society, the individual as supreme, whereas we as a family, as a church, know that actually the family is that basic unit of society, where a man and a woman, by the grace of God, bring forth children into the world to to raise them in the practice of the faith, to become citizens of the kingdom of heaven, to become saints. That enormously important privilege and duty of parents can be daunting at times, I'm sure, especially when we consider the Holy Family as our our model. In our weakness, in our poverty, as fallen individuals, we recognize the great challenge of following the example of the Holy Family that model of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph can sometimes seem impossible, like it can seem at times when we look to the example of our favorite saints. But what we can take to heart is that in our poverty, in our weakness in following that example, we actually are able to become like the Holy Family. In a turn of events, we We imitate the Holy Family in our poverty. Of course, this isn't meant to diminish the the sanctity of the Holy Family, given that its members included God himself and a sinless mother and a just husband. It's kind of hard to beat that. But we see how central poverty was in their family life, even. And this was seen in our reading to include even material poverty. 
Eight days after Christ's birth, they go up to Jerusalem, as we heard, to dedicate their son to God, offering a sacrifice, it says, of two turtle doves or two young pigeons. In the law of Moses, in the book of Leviticus, way early on in the Bible, it was prescribed that a sacrifice, that the sacrifice to be offered after the birth of a son was actually a lamb. But, it says in Leviticus, if a lamb couldn't be afforded by the, by the mother, two turtle loves or two young pigeons could be offered instead. The Holy Family was truly materially poor. They couldn't afford a lamb. They could only afford two turtle doves or two young pigeons. Joseph was a, a humble man who provided for his family through manual labor, that humble carpentry work. There can be the temptation in our affluent culture to live comfortably, to keeping up with the Joneses, so to speak, of being too, too fixed on material goods. That material poverty of the Holy Family challenges us to ask ourselves, not only do I have too many possessions, but even more importantly, am I too attached to those possessions? whether I have many of them or a few. Even with few possessions, we can still be too attached to them. Both the materially poor and the materially wealthy are thus challenged by the example of the, the Holy Family this, this day, whom we imitate through that material poverty in the sense of moderation and proper detachment. And we also see the, the poverty of the Holy Family in, in their obedience, right? Their going up to the temple was an obedience to the law, as it said a couple times throughout the reading, in accordance with the law of the Lord. Mary, who was a sinless virgin, had no need of being purified, and Jesus, because he was God, had no need to be dedicated to God. And yet, they submitted. They humbly followed the law of the Lord, even when it wasn't necessary for them. And that is a true poverty, of following not our own will, but the will of another. We all know how humbling and challenging it can be to be obedient to our parents, of, in a sense, impoverishing our own will, our own oftentimes strong will and ideas, under legitimate obedience to those God has placed over us for our own good. As a priest, the only promise that I made at my priest ordination and diaconate ordination was that of obedience to the bishop and his successors. I made that promise twice. And it's interesting to ponder why we make that twice, but maybe we can speculate at another time why we promise obedience so much. The Lord has called me, in a sense, to live a, a poverty of my will, to submit myself to the legitimate commands of the bishop. The poverty of obedience that we're all called to exercise in, in different capacities is an opportunity to unite ourselves to the poverty exemplified by the Holy Family. And as we look at the Holy Family continuing, and especially Simeon's prophecy, that beautiful prophecy he says regarding especially Jesus and Mary, we see a poverty of suffering that was to be part of the life of the Holy Family. Jesus didn't have to suffer, and yet while he was fully God, he chose to be fully human and so exper experience suffering like we do. The very thing that no science, no technology has been able to conquer, the very thing that from which no one is exempt, Christ chose to undergo with his mother and foster father, suffering. They would flee into Egypt to save the life of the newborn child. Christ was 
destined to be a sign that will be contradicted, according to Simeon, and rejected. Mary's own heart would be pierced with the, the sorrow that only a mother can have when she sees her child suffering. When we experience suffering in this world, we become keenly aware of our own weakness and inability to play the part of God. In our poverty, we are brought to our knees as our Savior was in the Garden of Gethsemane. In our poverty of suffering, we lean on God all the more, relying on his assistance with utter confidence in his plan for our lives and for our salvation. When we consider that lowliness of the Holy Family, our ability to model that communion in our own families doesn't seem as impossible. For we know that with God, all things are possible. That with him, we can grow in that material detachment. With him, we can humble ourselves as obedient children. With him, our suffering can be redemptive, can be beneficial to our salvation. Whether on the level of our biological families or our church family, we're in it together. We enter into the poverty of that holy family together, convinced that in that poverty, we become spiritually rich in the things of heaven. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, begotten of God, light from light, true God, true God. The God is not made thing, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made. For us men, came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified by the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and his marriage, and rose again on the third and third day in accordance with his scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom. Together, let us offer our petitions to the Father, knowing that he loves us and is always there to guide us. For the church, may God's guidance be upon every member in living out the gospel message. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the salvation of the world and for the conversion away from sin, and toward the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those undergoing trials, may the Lord bless them with strength and courage. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us here, may the Holy Spirit help us grow in faith, hope, and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who've died, may they be welcomed into the heavenly community and rest in eternal peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear our prayers and grant us every good thing according to your will. We ask this through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord our sacrifice to Praise be to your Father and the Lord of all We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that, through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and Saint Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and your peace. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the feast of this awe-filled mystery, Though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in ours and begotten before all ages. He has begun to exist in time, so that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call straying humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, 
heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Donald, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communion with the, celebrating the most sacred day on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be, may be defended by your protecting help. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, 
and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord, amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through Christ our Lord, amen. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world for us. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world for us. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world for us. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. appeared on the earth and lived among us.
heaven ere the worlds began to be he is alpha and omega he the source the ending be of the things that are that happen and that future you shall see evermore and evermore of that birth forever blessed when the virgin full of grace overshadowed by the spirit bore the savior of our race and the babe the world's redeemer first revealed his sacred face evermore and This is he whom seers and sages sang of old with one accord, whom the voices of the prophets promised in their faithful word. Now he shines the long expected. Let creation praise its Lord evermore and evermore. Let the heights of heaven adore him, angel hosts his praises sing. Powers, dominions now before him and extol our God and King. Let no tongue on earth be silent, every voice in constant ring, evermore and evermore. Christ to you with God the Father and the Spirit one in three. Hymns and chant and high thanksgiving and unwearied praises be. Honor, glory, and dominion and eternal victory evermore and evermore.
Let us pray. Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A few announcements. On December 29th from, at 6 p.m. and December 30th at 4 p.m., there will be a virtual Christmas open house with Father Scott and or myself. Uh, see the bulletin for the Zoom links for that. For the Solemnity of Mary, Mother of God, Masses will be December 31st, Vigil Mass at 5.30 p.m. St. John Cantius, also at 6 p.m. at St. Augustine's. And please note that there will not be a 5.30 p.m. Mass here at St. Mary's on the 31st. There will also be Mary, Mother of God Mass on January 1st, 8.30 a.m. here at the cathedral, and there will be no 7 a.m. or noon Mass at St. Mary's on that day. The funeral for Kathleen Joswick will be Tuesday, December 29th. Visitation will be at 9.30, rosary at 10, and funeral mass at 10.30. The rosary and the mass will be live streamed. If you, uh, Kathleen was a very uh, present member of our parish community here for many years, and this was kind of like a home for her. So please keep her in your prayers. Um, for the repose of her soul, and if you are available to, to come join in the, in the funeral to pray for her and uh, to console each other as we mourn her loss. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plain, and the mountains in reply echo back their joyous strains. Shall cease there.